Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how you can play Dwarf Fortress on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 500 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about it, join us, and get exclusive content. So this is something a little different for MacMost. I'm going to show you how to play what might be the most complex game ever created. It's been in constant development for almost two decades. Now it doesn't look like much. It looks very retro. But it's a very deep game. It's even complex to get it installed on your Mac. Alright so first where to get Door Fortress. Well you're going to go to Bay12Games.com and then the link's right there to go into the Dwarf Fortress page. And then you'll see Windows, Linux, Mac. So you want to download the Mac version. And it will download to your Downloads folder. So now in our Downloads folder let's extract it. Just double click on it to open it up. We have a folder that has everything in it. Now there's going to be a combination of things in here. The game and the game saves and all sorts of other data and tile sets and things. So I don't think putting this in the Applications folder is the right place. So instead I'm going to create a New Finder window here. I'm going to go Home and I'm going to create a Games folder here. And then I'm going to move this Door Fortress folder in there. I'm even going to rename it. Now if I try to run it it's not going to work. Why? Because of course I didn't download this from the Mac App Store and uh, it's not a signed app. You know, they're not following all the rules for Mac development here. So when I try to run it, this is what happens. It's going to say, Are you sure you want to open it? And I'm going to say, Sure, open. And it's actually going to run this terminal window here and bring up this. It cannot be opened because the developer not convert, cannot be verified. So, you know, there are normally ways around this, except that they don't work with Door Fortress because you're running this DF file. This is what it's running. It's an executable but it's in a wrapper here. So you have to get permissions for this. But this is also then running other things that are in the library here. So in order to get this to work you basically have to tell the Mac to grant permissions to run stuff inside this folder. And to do so we're going to use the terminal. So in a new terminal window here I'm going to go into this directory here. So I'm going to do CD space and then drag the directory in. And now I'm there. Uh, if I do a list I can see I'm seeing what's in here. Now I need to basically grant permission for everything in this folder to run. This is the command for that. xattr-r-d and then com.apple.quarantine. So it's basically going to go and add everything in this folder to quarantine and the dot slash there that says basically this current folder. So when I add that it's going to Give me an error there on some file in there but it's not important because it has actually worked and granted the permissions for that. So now I can close this window here and when I run by double clicking DF it will now launch. So you get this whole intro here. You can watch it but I'm going to just hit the escape key to skip it. So now let's start off by first Getting out of this small little window that we're in. The easiest way to do that is just to hit the green button here. And now it goes to full screen. And we'll start a game by hitting Create New World. Basically, I'm just hit the return key there and it's going to do all this stuff here. And then you can read through all this stuff. Uh, follow the instructions, hit the escape key to continue. You use the escape key a lot. I'm going to go and create a world. Uh, I'm going to change. I'm going to use the left arrow key here to go. And make a smaller world size just to speed things up here. But I'm going to leave, leave everything else as normal. I'm going to do Y for Go. And it's going to create this world here. And it's actually building the simulation now year by year to create this world. So when you get to some commands there at the bottom then you have to use Enter to accept. You have to wait some more. And now you're ready to go and start playing because you've created a world. So you can go and hit the Return key with Start Playing selected. And you're going to choose Dwarf Fortress. I'm not going to cover the other modes of the game in this video. And it's going to set up the world so you can choose an area to embark. This is where your dwarves are going to start their little kingdom. So you can move around here with the arrow keys. And on the left you see the little area you'll be embarking on. Now you want to look at the stuff on the right and pay very careful attention to get a nice balanced area to exist in. You can use a find function here. I find it doesn't work very well. But you want to look for something that number one does not have an aquifer. See how it says aquifer there? 
You don't want to have that because it's going to make it very hard to dig things out. There's going to be so much water underground. Uh, you want to look for something that's got some metal and some soil. So you just move the arrow keys around until you find something that kind of fits that description. And you also want to have some trees because you're going to need some wood to build things. So here's a spot I found. It's got trees. Uh, it's got some soil. It's got some metal. There's no aquifer. And most importantly I can embark there. Notice the E uh, command at the bottom is highlighted. If you come across some areas like uh, this you'll see there's already a dwarf fortress there. Some other uh, civilization that's occupying it. So you can't embark there. But I'll use this one. I'll hit E to embark. And I will just play now. Prepare for Journey it allows you to customize uh, your dwarves at the very beginning. But uh, you get a pretty good set to begin with. So you don't have to worry about uh, preparing for the journey until you've played a few times at least. So I'll hit play now. And then it will take me to my area. So now that I'm here I want to hit the space bar and pause. You can see pause at the top left. Basically you do a lot of things while things are paused and then you let it run forward. Notice I've got a spot here where that's my wagon and my dwarves. And you can see a couple of them have already started wandering off because they didn't pause right away. These wandered off all the way over here. Um, and they are uh, basically by the wagon where I have some supplies. Now the first thing I want to do is look around. If you hit the K key you go into look mode and then this little yellow X is a cursor and anything you move over you'll see described on the right. You see the full area all the way to the right of the screen and then there's a column with descriptions and menus and then there's the large map where you can spend most of your time looking. You can hit the Tab key to change mode. So for instance I can go into a mode here where it just gives me a big area for menus on the right and then the map on the left. So notice here that if I move off there's nothing there. It's just emptiness. So what is going on there? Well there are levels. You can go up and down levels using the greater than and less than keys. And by that I mean you have to hold the shift to do greater than and less than. So if you use the greater than you're going to go down so I go down here you can see the bottoms of these little lakes here and this is just all underground stuff. If I use less than I'll go up. So I'm up at this level and I go up to another level. This is kind of like a higher level here. And this is even a higher level. So you can kind of get the idea you have this terrain. This is great because it's a great place for me to dig. I need to dig out my fortress and I'll be able to just go right into the side here and dig in. If you end up in an area where there are no cliffs like this then you basically have to dig down from the floor. But it's easier if you just dig in and that's what we're going to do. But before we do that let's make things look nicer. Notice how everything here are just these ASCII characters, right? It's very retro looking. Well there are tile sets that you can download. So when you're playing Dwarf Fortress you're going to spend a lot of time at a site called DwarfFortressWiki.org. And this is going to contain all sorts of invaluable information for you to be able to learn how to play this game. Now one of the things here is a tile set repository. So if I search for tile sets I can see tile set repository here and there are all these tile sets that you could download. There are tons of them. I'm going to go with one of the most popular ones. I'm going to search for it. Phobius or Phobus. And I'm going to click on the graphic set here and then I can go and follow the links. So what I'm going to do is go to the graphic set package. I don't want any kind of pre-install goes here and then I'm going to hit download now and it's going to download this file here which then I can look at in my downloads folder again. Let's open that up. So to make things easy I've put two finder windows side by side. One shows my dwarf fortress folder. The other shows the folder for this tile set. And there are four locations that basically I want to copy from the tile set into my dwarf fortress folder. So first location is if I look under data there's a folder called art. And if I look here there's a folder called Data and Art. And I want to take everything in here and drag and drop it into here and replace all of the stuff. Some of the stuff is new. Some will get replaced. The second place I want to do that to is Init. So if I look in Init I'll see two folders here. Sometimes you'll just see the files. But in this case I want to go into the one that uh, this is no true type meaning no true type font. I don't worry about that. I just want to go in here and you'll see these three files. If I look under in it here I'll see three files that match those. So I drag and drop these in here and replace. The third location is under raw 
graphics. And here I can see raw graphics. And I drag and drop all the stuff from here into here. Apply to all. Replace. And then under raw there's also objects. And I'll drag and drop and replace all. And that's it. I've installed the tile set here. Now different tile sets have different sets of instructions. Some of them have these files here as installers but I find that they kind of don't work on the Mac. They're more oriented towards Windows or Linux. But by actually dragging the contents of those four folders into the equivalent folders in your Dwarf Fortress main folder then uh, you can install the tile set. So now that I've done that go back to Dwarf Fortress and I'm going to go to Escape and then Escape again. I'm going to go Save Game. And when it's done saving I can quit. Quit. And now I'll run the game again. And let me expand the window to full screen. I'll hit Continue Playing. And it loads it all in. And now you can notice that I have some nice looking terrain here. I'll use the Tab key to change the mode so I have a nice big screen over here. I can also use my trackpad or magic mouse to zoom in and out. So two fingers here on the trackpad. I can get it to a nice level. Things look a lot nicer now. Now notice the font here is using what's called a true type font. So it looks really nice but I find it messes up a lot on the Mac. The F12 key switches between two true type and using tiles with letters on them. So if you find your text at any point in the game messing up use F12 to switch modes. Now let's get back to what we were doing. Here's the side of the hill that we're going to carve into. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use D for designations. And then I'm going to use D for mine. And then I'm going to move my cursor, that little yellow X that sometimes eludes you, and I'm going to carve into the mountain. So I'm going to hit Return to start where I'm drawing and then Return to end. And it's going to mark out this area. So at that point I'm going to hit Escape to escape that. And then I'm going to hit the space bar to unpause. Unpausing and pausing is tricky because sometimes you're paused because you're in a menu and just by hitting Escape it unpauses. Other times you pause it manually and you have to use the space bar to unpause. When I unpause what's going to happen is one of my miners is going to realize there's a job to do. And it's, he's going to go here and try to dig this out. So I'll unpause here and sure enough there's a miner. He goes in and he starts digging in the rock and digging out the room that I wanted. So in this case it's a long hallway. You'll find out later on it's really useful to have a long hallway at the beginning of your fortress because there are things later in the game that you want to add by the door. So you want to make sure there's plenty of space. I'm going to use D again to designate and D for mine. And then move the cursor here. You can move the cursor faster by holding the Shift key. Then it uses it, moves it by blocks of 10. And then without the Shift key by 1. And I'm going to start here and hit Return. And then I'm going to move it down to here and hit return again to cut out a rectangle. Then I will escape spacebar to unpause and you see my miner will go in and dig out this space as well. So now I've got a little bit going here underground. It would be nice to speed things up if I had another miner. I've paused the game here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to U. I'm going to use the U key there and I see all of my dwarves. And I can use the arrow keys to go through them. And I can see for instance I've got a Jeweler. Jeweler is not really useful at this point in the game. So I'm going to use the Z key to go to the unit. I could see what he's up to. He's got no job right now but he's got some experience doing various things. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to go and hit the P key. You can see at the bottom it's P for preference and L for labor. And I'm going to go through this list here. Now when you're going through lists often instead of the arrow keys you need to use the plus and minus key. And by plus key I mean the equals key with the shift held down. But I'm going to go over mining and I'm going to hit return and say hey it's okay if you do some mining. As a matter of fact for now I'm going to go and tell you not to do jewelry. If I hit return for jewelry I'll see the sub stuff here. I'll escape to go out of it. I can do shift and return to turn off jewelry stuff. And now this dwarf is now a miner. And I can then escape and unpause. And now I'll actually have a second dwarf go in there and start mining. So now that I've created this room I can set an area. I'm going to use I to create a zone. And I'm going to move the yellow cursor there at the beginning of this room here. Hit Enter. Go all the way to the bottom right and hit Enter and then I get to define what the room is. I'm going to say this room is going to be a meeting area. So M and now it's a meeting area. I can do Escape for Done 
And what will happen now when I unpause is my dwarves and even some animals will start just gathering in that area. I've told them to gather there. So let's carve out some more areas and now when I unpause my miners will get to work carving that out. I'm going to get some of my other dwarves working here. I'm going to go in to find other areas. D to designate and see T is chopped down trees. So now I'm going to move the cursor here over some trees. So let's go over to the side here and say from here is the one corner of the rectangle to here and they will chop down some trees. And then I will unpause and I'll get some dwarves working on that. So there one dwarf came over to it and it started chopping down that tree. Now that I'm going to have some wood piles I can build some things. So I'm going to do B for building, then W for workshop, and then C for a carpenter's workshop. Then I get these 3 by 3 X's here. I'll put the carpenter's workshop in this room and I'll hit return and then it will ask me to choose a material. I only have cherry wood at the moment. That's that tree that was just chopped down. So I will select that by hitting Enter. You can see a dwarf is actually carrying some logs now into where that carpenter's workshop is and building it. Now once I have something built like this I use Q and Q allows me to control things so I can go put my X over the carpenter's workshop and I could do things like add a new task. And now I can make things. So I'm going to use the plus key to go down through here or I can just use the shortcut B to make a bed. And I can a for add a new task and I can do T for table and A for add a new task and C for chair. Matter of fact I'm going to add another bed there so you queue things up. Now there's also something called stockpiles. So I'm going to go back to the menu here do P for piles and then I'm going to uh, define one corner of it here and then another corner of it here. But before I do that I'm going to set what type of stockpile it is. So I'm going to do U for furniture and then I'm going to hit uh, Enter. And now that's a stockpile area for furniture. So what's going to happen now is as this furniture is built by the carpenter uh, it's going to then be automatically moved to the stockpile area. Stockpiles are important because anytime you produce something or collect something you can set a stockpile up to have it go there. And that includes things like refuse. So you want to actually define something where there's like refuse out uh, in the wilderness. Here you can see I had some furniture already in my wagon that I brought with me and the dwarves are instantly going to move that to the stockpile. Now that I've got some beds I can create a bedroom. So I create another uh, area and let's do that. I'll do D and D and mine out an area over here. I'm also going to mine out another room. It's going to be for a farm, an underground farm. So that's going to go in this room. So I'll do B and then P for farm plot. And what I'm going to do here, this is a weird kind of thing you need to do. Use the U and the M and the K and the H key to change the shape of this. So U to make it a little taller and K to make it a little wider. So I'm going to do a 3 by 3 farm here in the corner of this room. I'm lucky that it's kind of sandy, uh, soily area here. You can't build a farm on rock. I'll do that and then I'll escape back here, do build, and then I will create a workshop that's actually a still L. And this will allow me to take the products I grow and turn them in to a drink. So I'll use the materials I have here. I'll just use limestone which is some of the stuff I've dug out. And that will take a while to be built. So I have to make sure I have dwarves that can brew and make sure that I have dwarves that can farm. Um, when I use the Q key here just like with the carpenter shop I can go over to the farm here and I could plant things. So you can see here it has things I can plant. Now I'll use the A, B, C, and D keys to change season. So go to the A season and then go down to plump helmets and plant those because you're going to have some of those seeds with you. B, go down to the same thing, plant those. C, go down to the same thing, plant those. And D, go down to the same thing. So all four seasons I'm going to plant which are basically mushrooms. Now after I get some plants I can go and uh, wait till the still is built and go to the still here and add a new task and say brew drink from plant. But once I, I don't have enough plants right now to do that so I'm going to check back in a little bit once I've got some plants. In the meantime I will go and build B a bed. So you create a bed in the carpenter workshop. It's basically like Ikea. You're just creating the parts and then you go into a room here and then you place it. And you can see I've got Two beds, one cherry wood, one pear wood. I'll place one there and then I will do B again and place another one near it. 
and then I will wait. And you will see people will go pick up those beds, go in and assemble them in those spots. Once I do that I can use the Q key again, go over to a bed and say R make bedroom. I can use the plus key to increase the size to make this whole thing a bedroom and then enter and then I can say I want this to be a dormitory D. Not assign the bed. That means dorms can just freely use the bed if they're tired. The whole thing's dormitory so multiple people can sleep here. I could add more beds later on and then escape for done. And now when doors get tired they have a place to sleep. I'm going to create another room that's going to have the chair and table next to it and that's where they'll go to eat. So once you've got all this going uh, you're probably going to want to dig down. It's the last thing I'm going to show you. And the way to dig down is first uh, figure out where you want to dig from. Go out to there. Um, and then at the end of this I'm going to instead of D for mining I'm going to do J for downstair. And then I'm going to hit return. And then return again so it's a one square downstair thing. And then I'm going to unpause. They'll dig out that area and then dig the downstair. Now that doesn't get you much. If I go and use Shift and then greater than you could see I've got that one square there where I can see now because I built it downstair. I can see what's down there but I haven't actually dug it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to D for designate and go here and build an upstair downstairs. So I'm going to create basically a stairwell. Um, so I'm going to do I for U D stair and I'm going to put it right there. And that will then dig out that. So now there's a downstair from the top and an upstair to meet it. And you're going to need that every time. And because I did it up downstairs, I have a downstair here as well to go to the next level. So let me do that. I'm going to go down to the next level. And at that same exact square, I'm going to uh, do the I for up downstairs and two returns just to show I want that one spot. So now I've dug down two levels. Let's go back up here and I will escape and unpause. And it, you'll see a miner dig down there. And they disappear because they go down. Let's go down there and see. Up, oh, they've dug out a little hole there, and they've gone down yet another level. I've dug out this little shaft here with stairs in it. I can now do D and dig out some more area. So let's dig out a whole area around this, and you'll see my miners will come down the stairs and start digging out this area. So if I go up a level, there's part of that stairway up a level there. I'm at my main floor. I can go down. And I could see the miners digging out this area here. And they're going to find different types of stone that has different uses. They're going to find gems. They're going to find gold, silver, copper. They're going to find iron ore, which is the most important thing because then you can create a wood furnace to create charcoal. And then take the charcoal and put it in a smelter with the iron ore to create pig iron and then eventually steel. And then you can use a metalsmith to craft steal weapons and do all sorts of things. Now I know the term just scratch the surface is overused but that's really what I've done here. This game is very deep. There's so many different things you can do with it. It's also a very different type of game. It's more of a simulation than a game. You're going to lose. At some point your door fortress is going to be destroyed. There are going to be monsters that appear, invaders. There's going to be problems like you're going to run out of food, you're going to run out of water, there are ghosts, all sorts of weird things. Every time you play you learn how to do something new. You learn how to build new type of weapons, make jewels, do trades with nearby towns. And then each time the story that you're building will end. It may take hours or days of playing to get to that end for that fortress. And then when you're done you just start again building a new fortress. It's not for everyone but if you're into world building kind of games or strategy games then you should definitely give Door Fortress a try. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.